welcome to Worship with Lansing United Church on this World Communion Sunday. Thank you for being here. If you're visiting this morning, thank you for joining us. Um, and from home, if you're watching from home, thank you for uh, tuning in and being part of uh, this service with us, virtually or, or in person. So um, I just, I wanted to share a couple of things. So a couple of announcements. If there's ways you want to be more involved with Lansing, or you would like copies of the uh, order of service, because you don't have, you can know someone that doesn't have email, um, but would like it, just always let us know. Uh, Rebecca's in the office, she's happy to, to get stuff out to folks. Uh, we want to talk about the garden cleanup. There's garden cleanup dates that we have listed. If folks can uh, think about that one of those days, it's just sort of cutting back the, um, uh, the perennials and getting ready, putting the garden to bed, we shall say, for the, uh, for the fall. So we've got some dates. If you're interested in donating a bag of daffodils or something, please do so. We'll be happy to put them in and uh, then we can enjoy them next spring. Uh, again, this past week, there was I think probably three or four families standing out front. The kids were tromping through the garden, and of course I love that. And uh, they were just having the best time. The parents were talking and the kids were playing, and I thought, oh, I thought, yeah, daffodils will be nice for them to see come up in the, in the spring. So it's kind of, uh, it's just a, a garden in action, which I think is, is probably was the goal, right? That it's just always used and always enjoyed. So that's lovely. Um, this morning we have communion, and you'll have picked up, if you haven't already, we picked up little communion cups, and we'll get them to you if you uh, don't have them. They're a little finicky, but we will make sure that, um, that you can get it open, and uh, it was sort of our COVID backup, but it just allows you to, uh, uh, there's a wafer on top, and the juice is below, but, uh, but we'll, we'll walk through that when we do communion. Uh, you'll notice that the, uh, the Food Hub is doing a Thanksgiving special thing next uh, Friday, actually. So they're looking for turkeys, or money to buy turkeys, and looking for things to give. It's probably over 100 households Thanksgiving. So that's over 100 households just here in, in the Willowdale area that they're trying to uh, uh, to pull that together for next Friday so folks can enjoy Thanksgiving as well. Uh, for single people uh, or smaller families, they're just doing small chickens rather than a big turkey. And, and certainly for, um, you know, I hate to say it, but some men <laughs> who are on their own, you know, it, 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 they don't want a whole chicken or whatever. So just sort of catering meals to make sure that it's something that they, they would enjoy as well. So. Uh, so yeah, we'll help with that. Uh, one thing I'll ask, and I'll put this out in the bulletin, is we, mornings are here, are busy, we're trying to get the, the stuff set up. We really need someone at the greeters table. Just to, you know, just as a welcoming congregation, um, I really encourage folks to sign up once, you know, maybe once or twice a year, just to be at the table, someone comes up the stairs, and you can say, well, here's our order of service, here's a name tag if you want one, or maybe you already have one, but it's just so important. I can't stress it enough. And uh, I'm afraid if I stand there, I'll scare people out the door. So, uh, so, that, <laughs> so maybe it's better one of you folks, <laughs> folks do it. So I'm gonna keep harping about that in, in our e-blasts and stuff. So uh, that, would be, that would be wonderful if we can do that. This morning we're talking uh, about faith, and um, I have a, a little interesting story to share. The flowers, they're looking rather beaten and, and uh, beat up right now, but uh, I, I helped uh, with a celebration of life for a dear friend of mine uh, in Old Sound yesterday. And, uh, she was a fellow gardener, and she was 98, and well, right up to the very end, um, very very uh, interested in life and commu uh, community and uh, could still name all the Latin names for the flowers and all of those things. And when I got there on the table was this big thing and they said, we want you to take that back to your new church. 
and we want you to share it with those folks. So it was just kind of nice, and of course it's rolled around in the back of my car. Probably looks like I've seen better days, but anyway, the thought was there. But what was interesting about my friend Barbara had a deep sense of faith, and um, she said to me, and we had lots of conversations of what her funeral would look like and, and that kind of thing, and she said um, one thing, she said, don't use a lot of the religious mumbo-jumbo. She goes, this is for my family, and I don't want them to feel uncomfortable. I have enough faith to carry me. I know where I'm going, but let's just make it welcoming for them. And I thought, what a lovely thought, just to make it that celebration of life and, and not sometimes get bogged down with all the, uh, uh, the religious liturgy we can. So uh, I thought it was pretty generous and also faithful of her to think of her family. Uh, and she just, I just want them to be enjoying the time we need them. So, so that's uh, a little way that we can look at our faith in, in different ways as well. So. Uh, one final thing is during the prayers of the people, we, uh, uh, there is a silence in between there where folks are able to share their own prayers and that sort of thing. Uh, sometimes, you know, I think we feel like we need to lift someone up. And if anyone during that time wishes to, you know, to say a name like today, I'll, I'll pray for Barbara and just give thanks for her life. And... Um, as a United Church people, we're not always good at doing that. We're kind of shy. We don't pray a lot out loud. And, and uh, you come to church on Sunday mornings and you're stuck with my prayers. Um, so yeah, don't, don't hesitate or don't be shy or to let me know if uh, there's someone you uh, would like praying for. So yeah. Are there any other announcements? I think we're good. We will, I will share with you our acknowledgement of the territorial land and what we believe. As we gather together on this sacred land, it's been the site of human activity for more than 15,000 years. This land is the, is the territory of the Huron, Wen, Hedonasani, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit. The traditional treaty that Lansing United Church it falls under is Treaty Number 13, agreed to by the Crown of England and the Chiefs of the Mississauga of the Credit. Today, on this day, we give thanks for this land that's been under their care. And in our gratitude, our responsibility and our goal is to ensure that this is a sacred place of inclusivity, of healing, of openness, of love and respect. And our, prayer, our pledge is to care for this land as a symbol of our desire to walk with Indigenous people in a spirit of reconciliation and respect. Now I invite you just to settle in, have our breathing exercise, just feel grounded in this time as we prepare for worship. Breathe in this sense of community, the luxury of being with like-minded people. Breathe out any sense that you aren't enough or feelings of being alone. Breathe in the understanding that on World Communion Sunday, we sit at the table with sisters and brothers from around the world. Breathe out all that interferes with your sense of peace, those things that take too much of your energy and give you nothing in return. Breathe in this day that we celebrate at the Lord's table, giving thanks for all that we are and all that we can be as we gather to celebrate God's presence and raise our voices in praise. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you.
Steve asks for a lighter. I said, oh, we're going all set with these matches as I set myself on fire. We light these candles as a reminder of God's presence. The sun that was sent and the spirit that moves in and through our lives. We light this candle as a sign of our journey with indigenous people in a, a walk of truth and reconciliation. And we light this candle as a reminder that we are an affirming congregation and uh, that we make sure that this is a safe place for all. A safe place for all as I grew up and smoke, I think, one of these Sundays for me. You'll find uh, in your orders of service, Spirit, open my heart. So um, I'll find a
So our story this morning, keeping on our theme of faith, is called Farmer, Farmer Herman and the Flooding Barn. And as I share this story, I will let you know that this is a true story. Uh oh, that fan might be blowing in my ear. Um, I might have to shut it off. It's causing, is it causing some problems? Just wonder for the devices sometimes. It might be. There we go. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Allison. So Farmer, Farmer Herman had a fantastic farm. He had some amazing animals and a lovely piece of land. But he had a barn with a big, 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 big problem. You see, Farmer Herman's barn was at the bottom of a hill. And when it rained, the water would run down the hill and flood the barn. When the water would flood the barn, it would fill it up way high so that the barn couldn't be used for anything. If Farmer Herman had needed an indoor swimming pool, he would have been all set. However, he did not need an indoor swimming pool. And a barn with a bunch of water in it just wouldn't do. If you were Farmer Herman, what? would you do? You could drop a highly trained team of fluffy, parachuting sheep to soak up the water. Sheep look like they can soak up water. But you know that would be silly, because everyone knows that if you have a pile of soggy sheep sitting around for too long, they start to smell and get moldy. Frank the rooster is allergic to mold. Frank thinks that we should skip the sheep idea. I know you could buy a herd of pet elephants that could suck up the water with their long trunks and shoot it out. But I guess that would also be silly. Everyone knows that if you have a barn, you have to be willing to put up with some mice. And elephants don't like mice. Wait, of course, you could get a bunch of buckets and just scoop the water out. But that's silly too, because the last time we got out the, bu got the buckets, the cats kept using them as boats. You can try asking them not to, but let's be honest, you can't reason with a cat. Here's an idea. You could get 344 friends to come over and help you pick up the barn and move it to a place where there's no more water. Now that is really silly. Let me just tell you how silly it is. It's so silly because, actually, just wait a minute, it might just work. Farmer Herman and his son, Farmer Mike, thought it was a silly idea at first, too, but then they thought about it, and Farmer Mike went to the barn and started measuring and counting. He counted all the boards in the whole barn. He added up their weight and figured out that the barn weighed over 16,000 pounds. Now, 16,000 pounds is really, really heavy. That's heavier than 75 pudgy pigs. It's heavier than 6,000 phone books. Phone books were these things we used to use before the internet. However, Farmer Herman and Farmer Mike figured out that 344 friends all working together could lift something that is 16,000 pounds like a barn, for example. So they went to work. They crisscrossed metal bars through the barn so that it would not fall apart when they picked it up. The bars also made great handles. They got a lot, after a lot of planning and a lot of work and a lot of math, the day to move the barn finally came. On one July morning, 344 people showed up to move the barn and 4,000 people came to watch. Farmer Herman used a microphone and a loudspeaker to help everyone know what to do. Everybody got in their positions. They reached out at the same time. They grabbed the handle. When Farmer Herman told them to lift up on their handle, guess what? The barn came up off the ground. Everyone that had come to watch couldn't believe their eyes. After all, they had never seen people pick up an entire barn before. Everyone cheered. When Farmer, Her Farmer Her Herman asked his 344 friends to start carrying the barn up the hill, that's exactly what they did. 
They did what Farmer Herman said, and the barn started to slowly, slowly move up, up the hill. The barn had a new spot on the farm. It was dry and it was perfect. And it only happened because Farmer Herman was willing to try something really, really silly and have a little bit of faith and to do it together with 344 friends. If you were asked to ask Farmer Herman how someone like you could accomplish something so big and so silly together with a bunch of your friends, do you know what he'd tell you? He'd say, go for it, go for it, and have a little bit of faith. Our prayer of confession is printed in your bulletin for us to say in response. This is our time in the service where we just spend that little bit of time and recognize that none of us are perfect, that we're all vulnerable, we have to be gentle with each other and uh, with ourselves also. Gracious God, you give us the good news, but we don't always hear it. You give us the cup of life, but we don't always taste it. Yes. You give us the bread for the journey, but we don't always share it. Yes. Rekindle the gift of your spirit within us. Fill us with the spirit of power and love. Help us to hear the voices of those who have gone before us. Guide us in all that we say and do. This we pray in Jesus' name. Listening, being open to the Spirit, giving thanks, taking risks, experiencing life in new ways, using our faith. This is what God offers us every day. The gift of new beginnings over and over again. A bread of life to sustain us on the journey. And not just sustain us, but one that nourishes us, replenishes us, and fills our empty spaces. The opportunity to drink from the cup of life that will always fill us with the promise of hope and love to share. Our next hymn is number 497, Near My God to Thee.
Gregory and Steve has our scripture reading for the day. Scripture reading is taken from Luke chapter 17, verses 5 to 10. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who had just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, Come here at once and take your place at the table. Would you not rather say to him, Prepare supper for me, put on your apron, and serve me while I eat and drink. Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, We are worthless slaves. We have only done only what we ought to have done. May God bless this reading for our understanding. Steve? I think we're going to do the anthem now. Is that right? There, this is a reflection. Yeah. We've had a, a, a debate, but we're going to do the anthem with now because they've rehearsed and everything, so their voices are in good tune. And then sometimes Orville falls asleep during the sermon, so then it's a matter of waking him up to sing. So we we'll do it now when we're all set. So. <laughs>
not worth the wait. Folks, <laughs> thank you. And now I'm the one that has to do a reflection and think, okay, what was I going to say? So. I think what I was going to say is that this isn't really an easy piece of scripture to work with. It's kind of interesting, and I have to get it always right in my head from the beginning, or I get it all muddled up. The disciples say to Jesus, increase our faith, give us more faith. We're frightened. What if we can't do the job? What if we don't have enough faith? We're going to crash and burn. For heaven's sakes, help us, give us a hand. Jesus, you have the ability to increase our faith so that we can do the job you're calling us to do. And Jesus says to them, if you have even as much faith as a tiny mustard seed, that will be enough for you to move mountains, change people's lives, give them new beginnings. You need to get out there and get your job done. It doesn't sound pleasant, but look at the slaves. They've been out all their day planting and plowing, working hard, and when they come in from the field, do you have their meal ready? No, you don't, because it's their job to make the meal too, to serve you, and then they eat after, regardless of how tired they are. You are no different than the slaves. You are called to serve. You're only being asked to do what you're called to do. Now, it sounds a little harsh to me, but Jesus was known to have some pretty high expectations of himself as well as others. When I was in seminary, I had a placement working at the Guelph General Hospital in spiritual care with uh, Reverend Nancy Collette. And she was a tough little Baptist minister who had been already working at the Guelph General for 29 years and she had seen lots and she has since passed away. But on my second or third week of my placement near the end of my shift Nancy said you need to take these resources down to this family. They were grief resources, grief resources for children. I had met them earlier and the husband who was in his late 40s was at his end of life. He had told me that he and his wife had waited to have children. They were both veterinarians and they wanted to buy a farm and get it paid for and uh, get established before they had a family. So they started late and their son was only nine years old. A son that this gentleman would never grow up to see. Nancy had pulled some resources on grief counseling for kids and wanted me to drop them off just to see how he and his wife were doing. When I arrived in the room, the, the curtain was pulled, and I could hear the husband and wife quietly talking and crying, and I, I just couldn't bear the thought of their grief and then presenting them these resources. So I left them on the table, and I quietly left and went home. Nancy sent me a late note later to see how it went, and I told her what I did that I just couldn't bear to witness their grief. I didn't get a response back, but when I arrived for my shift the following week, Nancy was waiting and ready to pounce. She asked me if I wanted to be a hospital chaplain or if I just wanted to be some wispy volunteer. She used lots of colorful language, and I might add there was something in it about kicking my ass up around my shoulders of course, she said it very biblically. And if I ever pulled a stunt like that again, I would be finished. This is your job, she said, to provide the care and the resources people need, to walk with them in their lowest and most vulnerable times. Doesn't mean you don't have to be weepy, but it's not all about you. And not being able to witness their grief she told me to grow up and get out of her office and that she didn't want to see me for the rest of the day. She was right. 
If I was going to live into my role, I needed to have faith in my skills to do the work that God was calling me to do, to have faith in myself, have faith in God, in God's grace, to get on with it. And that's what Jesus is saying to the disciples when he said, when they said, Lord, increase our faith. He said, get on with it, get out there. You have been called to do a job. You're no different than these slaves. You're only doing what you ought to do, what you're being paid to do, I guess. Do what is expected of you. The slaves know their role and work with it. Whether we agree with it or not, it's Jesus' example. But American writer Anne Lamont writes, I have a lot of faith, but I'm also afraid a lot. And I have no real certainty about anything. I remember something Father Tom had told me once, that the opposite of faith is not doubt, but certainty. Certainty is missing the point entirely. Faith includes noticing the messiness, the emptiness, and the discomfort, and letting it be there until the light returns. Having faith isn't easy. It is anxiety-provoking. It sometimes means sitting still, waiting, praying, and then taking a big risk. And it's not easy. It's hard, and it takes faith. Because I didn't have faith in myself, or faith in Nancy's long years of experience, or even faith in this family to receive the resources of this grief counseling, I let everyone down. They were a practical family. They wanted these resources. They knew they were going to need these resources. Nancy's experience knew that they were going to need these resources. And she depended on me to deliver. I needed to put on my big girl pants and get with the program. And those were her words. I had to trust, trust God's call to serve, regardless of my own fears. Farmer Herman had a pro problem. That darn barn kept flooding. And what was he going to do? He had to have the faith to do the unthinkable. He needed to move more than 16,000 pounds of barn with the help of 344 friends up a hill to dry land. He had to have faith in his son's measurements and calculations, faith in his friends, faith in himself to direct and coordinate this huge task. There were lots who said it couldn't be done, but Farmer Herman had to dig deep, and he did. He had faith in his community, in his family, and his friends. Some folks have a hard time hearing this piece of scripture because for some it feels like Jesus is actually shaming the disciples, being too harsh with them. But really what Jesus is telling them is, you already have enough faith. You have to remember how to draw upon it. Go deep. I believe in you. Reverend Nancy Collette believed in me. And she did eventually give it back to, and she didn't kill me. But uh, she told me later, I have faith you can do this work. You just need to be on the right track and do it. What it takes is walking with people, having faith, being open to the Spirit. And then she said, find it or get out. So I found it most days. A woman named Kimberly Bracken Long writes that we serve God in one another not for the bonus points, and not only because God expects it, but because we know that God has shown us the way to an abundant life. God gives us what we need to flourish abundantly in faithful community. You folks had the faith to create the space here in Lansing so that it could be a community hub. There were setbacks, nail lighting, tons of work, still lots of negotiating that has to happen. But you did it in faith. Did the right thing so you could move forward. And now that it's been created, you have to have faith that folks will love it and treat it like you have. 
and we'll carry it forward. It may not happen exactly the way you intended it. It may not be the way that you would do it yourself. Sometimes we just have to take a deep breath and have faith that it'll move forward. It might just take a little bit of time. As a hub in Lansing, where people can gather, this is a place to celebrate your faith. It's a place that's safe, a place to be respected, to be welcomed unconditionally, a place where all are welcome. It is early days, and there's lots of community partners and children that are going to tromp through that garden. But we can't lose faith that people don't appreciate it or love it. Jesus offers us just this tiny speck of faith for us to work with. Just as small as a mustard seed. But it is enough so that we can change the world. Amen. Our next hymn is Faith of Our Fathers. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God. 
who has created and is created, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, and made community, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect and creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim that Jesus crucified and risen, our judge to our own, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us, we are not alone, and let's be And here we find ourselves on Rural Community Sunday. And as we gather at the table, we are reminded that this is not the table of Lansing United Church or the United Church of Canada, but the table of Jesus Christ. A place where all are welcome, the adults and the children, because we are all one in God's eyes. There's no magical age or time when you receive the bread of life. And if you don't choose to participate, some aren't always comfortable with it, please don't feel obligated. What does the Lord require of us? To the justice, the life of kindness, and to all the compassion of God. Then let us remember God's ways and seek to walk them together in unity and peace. Let us pray. God, as we gather in this place, on this day, in this warm fall weather, we give thanks for the relationships we have and build and nurture, those that are old and familiar, those that have been tested, those which continue to grow. We give thanks for what we can learn from each other. We give thanks for this country, our freedom, and our inclusivity as a nation. We give thanks for our communities, for those who live there, those who we connect with every day. We give thanks for those faithful hearts who have the vision so that we could be here today. God, we thank you for our faith and all of the twists and turns that it takes, takes us, for the dry spells in which we grow, and those times of richness when we have faith to share. We thank you for your blessed stepson, whose stories we carry in our hearts for the lessons of healing and forgiveness, generosity, and unconditional love. So we do have our communion cups. I'll uh, let you know when we'll, we'll actually share the communion. Uh, but they are finicky, so you may need to give someone a hand getting your lids on. On the night Jesus died, he was in the upper room with his friends. And they were together, and they ate, and they took a meal. And then he took the bread, and he broke it. And he passed it around for them to share. And he said, take, eat, and when you do, think of me. And then he took the cup. And he poured the wine into it. And as he passed it around, he said, this is the cup of God's blessings. This is the cup of life. Take, drink, and when you do, take a minute. So I invite you now to try and take your way as the bread of life. Jesus said, let the bread be Cobb's cheese bread, because I'm the one that gets left over with it, so I get to choose the bread. <laughs> he said, take, eat, and think of me.
And then when you're ready, there's no rush. But you can get it open. He took the cup and he took the drink. And he said, drink from the well of Christ and know that you are loved unconditionally. God, we give thanks that you bless this holy meal, these gifts, as we break bread and drink from the cup of your blessing. May we be united in Christ, he in us, and we in him. Make us strong in faith and in love. Give us the ability to carry out your work on this earth. Amen. And together we'll pray that you can sing the Creator God, we come before you as individuals, but together we make one body. It is through you that we are made whole. Help us to nourish one another and be true to this earth. Let us be your light and your light to shine out into the world. I think I did that at work. But we'll now, if everyone's ready, we'll do the prayer after communion. Gracious God, may your gifts of love transform and enlighten us so that we may live lives of thanksgiving. May your presence among us encourage to see justice, walk in peace with our sisters and brothers on this earth, and live our lives with humility and the hope of the Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And although these days we aren't necessarily shaking hands, I invite you to to stand and to your neighbor, we put your hands together and offer them the peace of Christ. We all Our offertory hymn is printed for you in your bulletin. We'll sing it together. It's not just about money and resources. It's about us coming together and sharing what we have in all the different ways, regardless of age and stage in life. We all have something to offer. And for that, we give thanks. Amen. And the prayer prayer is printed for you in your bulletin. We'll sing it together as well. Only happens. 
I have to apologize for my timing. I'm used to being right on the hour. Because in Tobermory, they'd go down to the Princess for breakfast. And if they didn't make it by 11.30, then they had to pay the full price and the breakfast special would be over. So at 11.30, the watches would start tapping. And we'd soon be out of there. Anyway, let us pray. Holy One, your faith in us is abundant. Help us to take our own mustard seeds and let them grow. Help us to be supportive and loving and patient. In these uncertain times, we have to pray unceasingly for world peace, for strength, for those who are experiencing these horrific weather conditions, those who struggle with fears, with COVID. God, help us to be gentle with each other. We pray for those people who we have no idea of what they're going through. Now in the silence of our hearts, O oh God, hear our prayers. I give thanks for the life of Barbara Wallace. God bless our service people who work in this community and throughout the world, providing medical care, emergency services, fire protection and policing, and work for world peace. We give thanks for the young people who are in our lives, who help to give us energy, who are often busy building lives of their own, and the little ones who keep us on our toes and challenge us and make us look at the world in different ways. We ask that you comfort those with broken hearts, those who struggle with mental illness or addiction or chronic pain. Help us to navigate the path of growing older, Help us to celebrate new ways of doing things, letting some things go and embracing new things we love. Help us to move on the right path as we continue to manage COVID, while at the same time be present in the world, each doing what we need to do to keep safe. We pray for our farmers, and we give their thanks for their faith to plant their crops each year, to tend to their animals, and ultimately bring food to our tables. And now we lift our voices up in the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Jesus Loves Me. Uh, for anyone visiting, we usually have a post food, and it will be um, not projected, but you'll hear the hymn uh, throughout the church. And uh, then there are some refreshments, and you can actually stay and have a cup of coffee or tea or and, uh, and visit it. So please stand as you're able and we'll sing together.
prayer is printed for you in your bulletin. We'll say it together. God, through you, anything is possible. Help us to go from here sharing your message in our words and actions. Bless those we love and those we know, keeping all of us here. Amen. Folks, go from here, go back out into your week, into this fall weather. Go knowing that you are loved unconditionally.